Plastic thingamajigs are the most common genre of 3D printed creations. If you browse the front page of Thingiverse, you'll see just how few of the most popular prints are useful. We have a Hardasaur for Valentine's Day, hardly the best gift for your significant other, this shark knife, which you can't cut anything with because it's made of thick plastic, and of course, these dreaded octopuses, which likely make up the majority of 3D printed trash ending up in landfills each year. A decade ago, we were promised that 3D printers would change our lives once they became readily available. Today, 3D printers are very affordable, with some costing less than a decent inkjet printer, and consequently, anyone who wants one already has one. Instead of changing their lives as futurists, of the past promised, most 3D printer buyers merely gained a convenient way to produce endless amounts of plastic widgets. How did the predominant use of this revolutionary new kind of manufacturing end up being the production of throwaway plastic trinkets? 3D printers were invented with prototyping in mind, solving niche problems by making hard to purchase or never before made parts or items. This is why I've considered getting one, because there are many instances where I want to make custom tools or items purpose-built to solve problems no one else has. As for other use cases, some items can only be 3D printed because of the layer-based method 3D printers use to fabricate items that can be very versatile and allow for designs that would be hard, if not impossible, to manufacture with other methods. Most people who get a 3D printer cannot use one for the purpose of prototyping, however. Few have the skills to create custom designs for 3D printing. Instead, they go to sites like Thingiverse to find pre-designed items to print. They end up getting their own manufacturing setup only to spend hours printing random items they easily could have bought on Timu, like this ring size measurer. This begs the question, if the only items you'll make are widely available online as mass-produced injection molded parts, why would you ever use a 3D printer? Unlike regular printers, 3D printers aren't the easiest to use. Prints can fail and require troubleshooting, leading to lots of wasted plastic filament. It's also very time consuming to create 3D printed items. Even small items take hours to print, and a low resolution print from an inexpensive printer can yield less than satisfactory results. Labor intensive sanding is often required to smooth out the grainy surface that most 3D prints have, but many skip this step and leave the ugly grooves on their prints, making them uncomfortable to handle and look at. The result is that most 3D printer owners end up with many low-quality items that they'd be better off purchasing online. This is assuming they even would purchase these items, because honestly, I feel many people print random stuff to justify the purchase of their printer, ensuring it doesn't just sit there collecting dust. Beyond making stuff for personal enjoyment, some 3D printer owners are convinced they can profit by selling their prints. This is by no means impossible, as, for instance, there are artists who make beautiful beautiful figurines sculpted on a computer and painted by hand, or specialists who create custom high-quality masks for cosplayers. I know highly skilled people who make these kinds of items, and that's where 3D printing shines. But it all goes downhill from there. It seems like everyone and their pet rock is starting up a 3D printing business these days, watching videos on YouTube promising you'll make thousands of dollars when, in all likelihood, you will lose money because it's a very saturated market. What's funny is these YouTubers tell on themselves. If you watch this video of a guy who claims in his thumbnail that he made $8,263, you'll find he actually made negative $544.34, which is next level clickbait. Oddly enough, that YouTuber did say some meaningful things, like the problem of competing with injection molded items and the imperative to only print items where the best method of creating them is 3D printing. That being said, these kinds of start your six-figure side hustle and three easy steps videos are misleading, and often the creator's only goal when making them is to funnel people into their video descriptions, which are overflowing with affiliate links. As it's commonly said, the first millionaires in a gold rush are not the miners, but the ones selling the shovels and picks. This is not to say there are no successful 3D printing businesses, though, and one or two have even come across my TikTok for you feed. Take 
Shellington Labs as an example. The man who runs the page sells memes in the form of 3D printed figurines that play popular TikTok audios when you press a button. That's all fine and dandy, and he designs the items himself, but the quality of these items is very poor. The items are printed at a very low resolution, meaning each plastic layer that forms the 3D shape is very thick, resulting in visible grooves on the object. This is purely a time-saving measure, as when you cut the layer height in half to increase print quality, you essentially double the time it takes for your creation to print. Printing at a lower resolution allows you to sell more items, but at the cost of quality. And for $40, you'd expect no holes or visible grooves in the product. The items are also the solid color of the filament they were printed in, meaning they look very shiny and oppressively bright. They would look much better sanded, coated in filling material, primed, and painted. This is not to say that no effort goes into making these items, but for the price, I'd expect that they'd put in slightly more effort so it wouldn't be an eyesore on your desk. I'm not saying that 3D printed objects are always poor quality or useless. That's not the case. Whether 3D printed items are low quality or high quality, there are certainly a lot more of them, and they barge their way into maker's markets where handmade goods made in small batches are sold. Next to booths selling intricate handcrafted jewelry or ceramics, you'll reportedly find tables covered in 3D printed plastic items, and this has rubbed some makers the wrong way. I need to say something mean. You should not be allowed to make 3D printed crap and pass it off as handmade stuff and sell it at a maker's market. I'm talking about people who go online, find a pattern for some trinket, and then 3D print a bunch of them and sell them at a stand as though they've like handmade these things. I think it's an insult to people who actually do make things and craft things by hand. Though I haven't been to a maker's market, the commenters under that TikTok video wholeheartedly agreed with that creator. I wouldn't go so far as to call 3D printed items crap, as crap is in the eye of the beholder, but many say these items are poorly printed and oftentimes unsanded, like the TikTok shop desk toys I talked about earlier. I mostly have a problem with these vendors not making the designs themselves. If all you do is license a design someone else made, hit print, come back in a few hours, and pop the item off the print bed, did you really make that item? I feel like going to a maker's fair with, for instance, one of those 3D printed articulating dragons is kind of like going to an art market and selling stock photos you printed out on a Canon inkjet printer. Yes, you have the right to do so, and people may enjoy your prints and buy them, but it goes against the spirit of the venue where you are selling them. Speaking of these 3D printed articulating dragons that were mentioned in the comments under that TikTok video, I've heard of them before. I think they look cool when printed well, and while I don't have space in my apartment for a giant 3D printed dragon, they'd be a good novelty fidget toy that I'd get a solid few seconds of enjoyment out of. That being said, there's a lot of hype around these dragons which I don't fully understand. According to the 3D printing subreddit, most dragon designs come from Cinderwing 3D, who makes anywhere from $92,000 to $108,000 a month on Patreon selling these dragon designs that she digitally sculpts. To be honest, good for her. In a world of AI-generated garbage, I love to see a hardworking artist becoming a self-made millionaire living their dreams. I do have some issues with this dragon phenomenon, however. Cinderwing 3D is not just an artist selling her work. She's selling the commercial rights to sell her designs as physical items. And she says she sparks entrepreneurship so that people can create businesses of their own. In this dragon gold rush, she's the millionaire selling the picks and shovels to the prospectors who, in all likelihood, will not be millionaires themselves. As the Reddit user Almighty Oreo pointed out, any dragon seller will compete with thousands of other dragon sellers. You'll have to create a print farm, that is, get a bunch of 3D printers working in tandem to make the volume of dragons required to sell them at a competitive price and turn a profit higher than just a few dollars a day. Because of the tremendous investment needed to create a profitable business with these dragons, my advice to anyone who wants to sign up for Cinderwing 3D's Patreon is don't expect to make money. 
only become a patron if you enjoy printing these dragons and if you'd print them even if you didn't make a dime. While I don't want to disparage the 3D printing community, I question whether or not a lot of stuff on Thingiverse or other sites with 3D files is worth printing, especially considering the environmental and potential health risks of 3D printing. If you're producing endless piles of difficult to recycle 3D printed widgets only to play with each one for two seconds, you're creating piles of waste that usually end up in landfills. If your print fails dramatically where the item breaks apart during printing or gets dislodged from the print bed, leaving the extruder head spewing plastic into the air as opposed to on the item you're printing, there's only so many times you can remelt and reuse the fibrous plastic before the quality of the filament degrades significantly. There's also the issue of running what is essentially a plastic melting machine continuously in your home with no industrial ventilation system to suck up any dangerous compounds produced by the 3D printing process. ASHRAE, or the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers, recommends that a residential building maintain a ventilation rate of 0.35 air changes per hour. If you're thinking of running a print farm out of your home, that might not be advisable without installing a sophisticated ventilation system. A NIOSH guide for 3D printer use cites studies indicating that anywhere from three to six air changes per hour are required for adequate ventilation. If you can't achieve that, it's likely you'll need large HEPA filters in your space. For print farms, ideally, you should have the printers enclosed in cabinets that filter the volatile organic compounds released during printing. Many who wish to produce 3D printed items on a large scale may not consider these safety measures. I hope no one takes this video the wrong way, as I love plastic trinkets as much as the next guy, but many of these designs produced at scale are a kind of tangible slop. At least human artists make these designs, though. I dread the day when generative AI takes over much of the 3D modeling process. This technology already exists and will only improve, becoming readily adopted by people who already don't care if they design their prints themselves. We have enough AI slop polluting the internet, and I'd hate to see it polluting the earth with plastic as well. Anyways, I'm Robert Tolpe, and if you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.